Hey guys, it's me again, uh, Barry with Barry's A Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, and this is video number 500. Finally, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I, I probably should at least uh, let you guys know what kind of DVD recorder I use because this DB, DVD recorder I have has been absolutely flawless for at least 500 DVDs uh, as you guys might know in addition to the videos that I put on YouTube uh, it's actually a DVD first then it's uploaded to YouTube the DVD goes to the customer so that in case of any trouble upon installation he can at least watch the DVD and see well okay I see the system itself is is working fine so I must have made a wiring mistake or didn't look at the manual for this or that but at any rate um, what better video to use for number 500 than my own little development, the full Delco system conversion. Uh, now this is uh, a track, or I'm sorry, radio has been converted to modern electronics uh, for that massive increase in output power, improved signal reception, uh, aux input, and all that cool stuff. Uh, but uh, that leaves the a track high and dry because the a track is designed to work into a common ground speaker system, and it will not work with a converted radio that's been wired for maximum output. So that means the a track at the very least, at, at the very least needs to have a line output added to feed the aux input on the radio. Well, I don't just add a line output because that leaves a 50-year-old preamp inside this unit, and the old preamp doesn't sound nearly as bright as the preamp that I developed. So this is why I call this my uh, full Delco system conversion um, of this particular type, and, and, and mine is the only shop in the world that offers this particular level of conversion. Uh, most other shops would put a line output on the A-Track player and disable the audio section and it's good to go but um, I being the more or less kind of world's accepted A-Track expert it was up to me to develop a better solution uh, so anyway you're, you're gonna hear the difference <laughs> big time uh, you're gonna hear a very bright sounding A-Track so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started we got a lot to go through to test this system so let's start her up I got her set to FM and the uh, first thing we'll check is the presets make sure that they can all be set to stations I've got them all set to stations in my area Okay, and I'm going to keep music very short to avoid getting nailed for copyright issues. Okay, now let's go all the way up the FM dial and make sure we pick up a decent number of stations here. From the Okaya Wingay to Cheers from... There. And Alice says it's a strange thing that happened. A man, he tries to get away. For up to 60 months. So you'll save them. Learn more. So that's why Superstar Car is to serve Iris. And Walt. It's wisdom. Staff Wednesday, noon. Of Arizona. The bedroom Express keeps them. Is that our lifestyles often work? Look, that might be a new record. That's about 35, 36 FM stations. Uh, now, it is just because of local signal conditions. Uh, uh, this converter radio is the exact same as any other converter radio. It has the exact same electronics. So, um, this is just your typical converter radio, and signal conditions are especially good right now in my area. Let's go ahead and switch over to AM, which on this model, there's no AM FM switch, so we turn it off and then right back on within about half a second. So, here we go. Off, on. Okay, now we're on AM, and we should get two weak stations around here. With one, two, and then we get a stronger one about the middle. And then there's our strong AM station. Okay, so now we'll go back to FM so I can demonstrate the the balance and fader functions. It was. I guess we almost no. We're gonna do we're gonna do this during talk, so I don't get nailed for copyright stuff. Okay, well I'm gonna activate the virtual front rear fader. We do that by giving our tone control two turns to the right. So I'm gonna rotate it to the center, so I've got room to turn it to the right, and see if we can activate the virtual fader. I think a secure board fader adjust. Okay, fader adjust. So now let's bring our output level meters into the picture. And as you can see, this tone control is now adjusting our front rear speaker balance. All the way front, all the way rear, front, rear. Okay, I'm going to center them. 
<laughs> Take my hand off the control and fader is set. Okay, now you can turn your tone control back to how you like it to sound. Okay, now I'm going to activate the virtual left right balance control. Same procedure except we turn our tone control twice to the left to activate it. So here we go. Balance adjust. Okay, now the same control is adjusting our left right balance all the way left. All the way right. Left, right. Okay, I'm going to center the speakers. Take my hand off the control. Balance set. Okay, so now we've adjusted our balance fader. Okay, AM, FM, balance fader. Tone control obviously works because that's what activates the uh, the functions. Okay, let's uh, check the line input real quick. And in this case, since the A track takes up the line in, or since the A track takes up the aux input, I put an aux input on the A track so that anytime there's no tape in the unit, it'll pass your aux signal directly to the radio. So we're going to check that real quick. Just make sure it switches over with a quick test tone. One side, other side. Okay, so now after using the uh, aux input, there is a 20 second delay before the radio comes back. That's because of a Vox circuit VOX voice operated switch that holds on to the aux signal a little longer than it really needs to just to make sure that it's not constantly switching back and forth between the radio and your MP3 player, like between songs and, you know, that can be really irritating. So the radio is designed to hold on to that signal for 20 seconds. If you don't like the delay, just turn the radio off, turn it right back on, and it'll work immediately again. Now, time for the good news. Time to test the eight track function. We don't need these meters anymore. Okay, now uh, now I have to make the eight track uh, a little bit louder than I would if this was a combination radio eight track unit with everything in the same cabinet. But because the eight track is remote, there's probably a good two feet separating the eight track from the radio unit, and my preamp has more gain than the system was ever designed to have, especially with two separate units. So uh, two things need to happen to make sure we get good sound out of this. Number one, there needs to be a good ground connection between the, the A-track chassis and the radio traction uh, tr chassis that may or may not be provided by the car frame once everything is mounted. Uh, if you get like a motorboat noise when you turn the A-track up, then you need to run a dedicated ground wire between the chassis of these two units uh, straight between these two chassis. Um, I have a ground jumper connecting them together right now. And now, of course, the system is grounded enough to power everything up and make it run, but it's, it's a ground that goes through the car wiring, which isn't really a direct ground. Um, it's not enough of a ground in some cases to make your signals quiet and free of interference. So anyway, now that I've yeah. shot my face off about that, I will also say that with a, with a, with a full Delco system conversion where the radio and A-Track are separate components, uh, you want to turn the radio down a bit before you insert the A-Track because I have to crank the A-Track up pretty high to overcome the uh, basically the weaknesses of the original system design, that is the way the units are situated and all that. So, Give us a better tool. Okay, so we know we've got our radio working now. Got a little music there. Okay, now I'm going to turn the radio down, pop a tape in here, Neil Sedaka. Now you'll notice that that's a very bright sounding A-Track. It might be a little bit too much treble. And if that's the case, just back off the tone. Now it sounds more like that warmth of the A-Track analog format. And if you want the extra brightness, you can crank it up. Now, there is a need for that additional brightness. This tape sounded too bright, but this next tape I'm going to pop in there is, o is older, more worn, and has less treble. So we'll see how this tape sounds on the, on the setting that I used to make this sound like an 8-track. Very dull, no life at all. And so that's why we need the extra treble for tapes like that. I'm just running it through tracks, you know, making sure that uh, you know switches tracks properly. Now, when we pull the tape out, the radio does come back immediately. That's because the A track triggers uh, a circuit that forces the aux mode, and it untriggers it when you pull the tape out. There's no way to do that with a with an with an other aux source like a MP3 player. So that's why that had that delay. So we'll pop in Neil Sedaka for one more last experience of my very bright sounding A-track work. 
So it strikes much times. Okay, pull the out. Radio comes back. Let's check the dial light real quick. Okay, yep, you can see that dial light flashing on and off in response to my command. So that is the complete test. Everything is working properly. Ready to go back to the customer. Video number 500 is complete, assuming that uh, something crazy doesn't happen when I stick the DVD in my computer to, uh, to encode it and upload it to YouTube. So on that hopefully very happy note, I'm Barry with Barry's a track and Classic Car Radio Pair. This is video number 500. Yes, it's taken a few years to get to this mark, and I'm pretty relieved about it. Um, so, I'm pretty happy that they have video number 500. Hey, okay. Uh, no autograph. Sorry, there's just no time. You know, I got to hit the stage in five minutes. Um, so, my website is in the description below. My phone number, should you need this type of service, is 928-533-9666. Thanks so much, guys, for watching video number 500. And thank you, Andrew, from... I know he's got to live somewhere. Andrew is in Rochester, Minnesota, so I will definitely be calling him before shipping this uh, in light of the George Floyd protesting and all that stuff to make sure that the uh, that that the shipping carriers have a have a clear channel to the uh, between me and uh, and that customer. So thanks so much for watching, listening, guys, and we'll see you next time.